Good afternoon. The Montgomery County Board of Education combined board meeting Tuesday, May 15, 2018, at Central Office Auditorium is now called to order. First, we'll have an invocation by Ms. Melissa Stone, followed by the Place of Allegiance by Lanier High School ROTC. Let's bow our heads. Holy Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you today with thanksgiving. Thank you for the very breath in our lungs. Lord, we ask that you will just give us the wisdom and discernment that we need. Lord, and just the boldness to make the right decisions, Lord, um, to be in your will. Lord, I pray a special prayer for this board. I pray that you will unify us. Lord, I pray that um, you will be with Dr. Moore, that you will um, just give her the strength, the courage, and the ability to be a godly leader for our children and for our faculty. Lord, I pray for our teachers, our principals, our support staff. Lord, I pray that you will pour out your richest blessings upon them. And Lord, I pray for our children. I pray, Lord, that they will be like you, that they will continue to grow in wisdom and stature. And Lord, I pray that as we finish out this year, that they will finish strong. And Lord, um, just please keep them safe over the summer months. And Lord, right now, I pray that you will just fill this room with your Holy Spirit that your spirit will guide and direct us. And Lord, that everything that we say and do will be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray all these things. Amen. 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 Beautiful Excellent. prayer, Melissa. Beautiful Amen. prayer. of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We do have an, uh, um, a quorum with all members present. At this time, we need a motion to approve the revised agenda. Mr. President, I move that we uh, make a change on our agenda, adding to number six an F, and that F is for the superintendent's contract because that is a board action item. And if everybody would add. F and F2, item number six. Having said that, I move that we adopt the revised agenda. Second. Did you, Melissa, you second? Yes, yes sir, second. I did. And it's been more than probably second that we adopt the revised agenda as printed. Here any discussions? Seeing here none, those who are in favor, let's see by show of hands. It is unanimous. First item on the agenda is recognitions. At this time, we have recognitions by Mr. Senator. Good afternoon, Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good members of the board and uh, honored guests. We're so glad you're here. There are a lot of great things going on here at MPS, which is why we have so many people to recognize this evening. Being the last um, board meeting of the year, we have a lot of good stuff always in the last board meeting. We're going to get started with some students from Brew Tech because um, they have to leave here soon to collect even more awards. Can we get Steve Ballard and the Vex Robotics team to join us, please? They're coming. All right. All right. 
Come in, guys. Come in. Where's Mr. Ballard? Is he over there? There he is. Okay, hey, Steve. Um, these students traveled to Louisville, Kentucky to compete in the VEX World Championships. The competition included 579 robots and more than 15,500 students from 37 countries. After competing in 10 matches over three days, the team of William Sumlin, Trevor Taylor, and William Percival came in 46th in their division. This is a huge accomplishment on a global stage. Please join the board in congratulating these kids for this wonderful, wonderful. Thank you guys. We're going to let you go, but ask Mr. Ballard to stand or stay because he's going to be involved here in a couple of other things. Very good. A group of Brutech students took part in a recent Alabama Technology Student Association Conference in Birmingham. In addition to winning several awards, Brutech students were elected to state officer positions. In fact, four of the six current state TSA officers are from Brutech. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, right. Those students are Jose Billups, John Joe, Lee Turner, and Seth Deloney. Let's uh, join the board in congratulating these guys for their, and ladies, I'm sorry, for their wonderful work. Congratulations, guys. Thank you very much. Mr. Ballard, thank you for all of your dedication. I well, just, he's not through yet. Well, <laughs> I wish we could clone him. And um, I still have Madison's navy blue TSA blazer, and those were some of the best days of her life. So you have impacted so many people. Thank you. Finishing up the trifecta for Brutech will be the students who attended the Hope Global Forums in Atlanta. This is hosted by Operation Hope. The HOPE Global Forum's annual meeting focuses on financial <laughs> inclusion and empowerment of the poor. The goal is to help open up the discussion on how the positive effects of a free enterprise system can be extended to people around the world. Speakers this year included Tom Brokaw, Jesse Jackson, Andrew L Young, and comedian Chris Tucker. Oh, the wow. students who attended are William Sumlin, Dee Dee Dillard, Lily Lushington, Austin Smith, Amelia Blair, Devin Watts, and Rian Chong. Am I close? Ryan. Ryan Chong. Okay, thank you. Also, Trinity Watts Knuckles and Jaquita Posey uh, came from other schools besides um, uh, Brutech. But let's give these. Uh, yeah, sure, yeah. I just want to mention uh, Ms. Doris Crenshaw was our, uh, from Southern Virginia, Southern Virginia Regional Leadership Development. I got it. And she sponsored our trip, and we couldn't uh, have done it without her. We really appreciate it. And Doris Crenshaw is Mick, Dr. Nice Mickey work. Crenshaw's mom. Next, we'd like to ask Austin Smith, who's been in Youth Government Club for four years. Where's Austin? There he's coming back. This is, a, this is the Renaissance man right here. He's into everything. He's been in the Youth Government Club for four years, and this year he was elected to serve as Montgomery's Youth Mayor. He's been in a... I got a pothole I want to talk to you about. <laughs> He's been an attorney and a judge on the youth judicial team, and in his first year on the youth legislature, his bill was chosen the top first-year bill in the state of Alabama. Wow. Teacher. <laughs> Teacher Teresa Baxley said she was proud to have seen Austin develop into a confident, self-assured young man that he has become. Let's all give him one more big hand for all of the confidence. Congratulations. Um, I'd, like for, I'd like for the audience to know that he is the son of our board member, Erica Smith oh, and Robert that. Smith. Wonderful. Chip off the old block. Right. <laughs> Congratulations, sir. All right, great. Next, 
we have an elite group of cadets. Will Sergeant First Class Michael Walker and the Carver JROTC please join us? Let's give them a hand as they come up. The Carver JROTC is ranked third in the state after receiving a 98.5 out of a possible 100 points in its accreditation inspection by the U.S. Army Governor uh, of U.S. Army. Governor Kay Ivey presented the unit with a certificate for its achievement. But state recognition wasn't enough, so the cadets also attended the U.S. Army National Drill Championship in Louisville, Kentucky. What goes on in Louisville, doesn't it? Where the unit finished ranked 18th in the nation. There were 101 schools represented at the event. The unit ranked 6th in unarmed exhibition, 7th in dual exhibition, 18th in color guard, 25th in regulation drill, and 27th in inspection. Please join the board in congratulating the Carver JROTC group. I know I saw Principal Gary Hall around here. He's over here. Oh, there he is. Okay, fantastic. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Robert, you know I got you don't know how to quit talking. And if that wasn't enough, we have more Carver students. As a matter of fact, the Carver Choir, um, Sharon Cargill and members of the Carver Choir, please come forward. Ms. Cargill is here because Choir Director Henry Terry couldn't be with us this evening. The Carver High Concert and Honor Choirs traveled to Orlando, Florida for the choir competition at the Orlando Fest where both choirs earned superior ratings. Not only that, the Honor Choir was named the grand champion of the festival. Isn't that wonderful? The students also toured colleges and schools in the area while they were there. Please join the board in congratulating the Carver Choirs on this impressive achievement. cheerleading Wolverine. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Hey, Mr. Porterfield, I think you can sing pretty well, too. What? I think you can sing. I've, I've been next to you when we've been singing. <laughs> thank you guys very much. Congratulations and thank you. Go to Disney World, though, you think, World, too, didn't you? Okay, what was your favorite ride? You didn't ride. Oh, no. There you go. All right. She's representing. I got you. Okay. Next, we uh, continue our musical theme with a Baldwin Arts and Academics Magnet student honored for a musical composition. And I'm going to mess up your name, I know. Minji Eum, am I close? She's not even listening. Well, okay. Minji is just one of four students in the state of Alabama to win a National PTA Reflections Award She'll receive a silver medal and a certificate of excellence, and her musical composition will be on traveling display around the United States for a year. What, what's your composition? Is it, is it a piano or piano composition? And, and it's a recording composition? Fantastic. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Mr. Salter, let her ma mama come take a picture, yeah, please. Mama, take come back. Well, come on, y'all all. And the teacher. Come on. Miss Wright, you want to come too? Miss Wright, Miss Wright, Wright. Wright. Wright, you need to get on this way. Well, uh, come on, Miss Wright. You the principal, if they're going to try to do it, do it. That's my school. Come on out here. <laughs> Okay, Mom. Mom, uh, Mom, do you want me to take your picture? Take use your. Here, here, I'll do it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wait a second. All right. Everybody say, "No way, be fossil Latino." Good. One more. All right. Congratulations. All right, 
Next, we're going to honor someone. Uh oh. Thank you, sir. <laughs> okay. Next, we're going to honor someone who's about to leave us for a year. Now, that's unusual, but in this case, it's justified. Will Miss Zeslin Simmons come forward? She didn't leave, did she? Okay. The reason she's leaving us for a year is Miss Simmons is a BTW teacher who has been named the Alabama State Teacher of the Year. honoring Ms. Simmons with a re resolution, and I'm going to do my best to read it now. Whereas teachers are at the heart of every classroom, and Montgomery County Public Schools is blessed with an abundance of outstanding teachers. And whereas Booker T. Washington Magnet High School teacher Zeslin Simmons was named the Montgomery County Public Schools Secondary Teacher of the Year, and also the Secondary Teacher of the Year for the State of Alabama, and whereas Ms. Simmons has been teaching in Montgomery Public Schools for 18 years, during that time becoming a nationally board certified teacher, and was recognized in 2013 by the National Robert. Math and Science Initiative as the AP Teacher of the Year. And whereas Ms. Simmons has for years provided support for teachers as a presenter for A Plus College Ready and the National Math and Science Initiative, where she conducts AP <laughs> language and laying the foundation <laughs> workshops around the Southeast. And whereas Ms. Simmons, who was inspired to become an educator by her kindergarten teacher, has inspired countless BTW students to excel in their work and will now spend the next school year motivating teachers and students across the state and participating in the National Teacher of the Year program. Now, therefore, let it be resolved this 15th day of May, 2018, that the Montgomery County Board of Education recognizes Zeslin Simmons for an outstanding, as an outstanding educator congratulates her for her many accomplishments and wishes her well as she represents Montgomery County Public Schools and Alabama across the state and the nation as Alabama's Teacher of the Year. Do you have, do you have any family here? Yeah, about the same thing. There, all right. Congratulations. Well, there's, there's one more thing I have to say. We also would like to recognize her principal, Dr. Quasia Starks. Yes. Dr. Starks, in her tenure at BTW, has had five teachers picked as MPS Teacher of the Year. Four of those made it to the state's Sweet 16, and, and two of them, including Ms. Simmons, were named Teachers of the Year, Alabama Teachers of the Year. Congratulations. She must be doing something right, Quasia. Nice job. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, more scholarship stuff. We've got lots of scholarship stuff to talk about tonight. This is the third year, just if you'll get the, our uh, med medical place scholars to come on in. This is the third year that President and CEO Dr. Alfred Seawright and Medical Place has provided academic scholarships to MPS students. This year there are 10 scholarship recipients. Each will receive $1,000 for college expenses. It is Dr. Seawright's belief that the businesses in the community should play a role in making sure our children succeed. So he's been partnering rather with the MPS board for three years to help further our children's education. He wants to see the kids excel in college, get management positions or start their own businesses and create jobs and give back to the community just like he has. Dr. Seawright is out of the country so his daughter, Kwanzaa Seawright, will pass out the awards. Along with her is Human Resources and Accounting Manager Katrina Dumas, Accounting Rep and Radio Host Felicia Thomas. Congratulations to all the recipients and their families on behalf of Dr. Seawright and Medical Place family. We expect to hear great things from all of you in the future. And now, go ahead, take pictures. 
I'm going to attempt one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life, and that's getting all these names right. So please forgive me if I, if I mess up the pronunciation of your name. We have Manor Akinlosutu. Am I close? Kind of, sort of? All right, from Park Crossing High School. He said for $1,000, that's close enough. <laughs> Sharkeisha, I'm sorry, Sharkeisha, is that right, Davis? Close enough. I got Davis right from George Washington Harbor High School. Congratulations. La Kirkland Davis from Sydney Lanier High School. Not here today, okay. Um, also, we have um, Somer Davis from Jefferson Davis High School. We have Justice for Trell from Park Crossing High School. We have Charity Glover from Sydney Lanier High School. We have Jacob Myrick from Robert E. Lee High School. We have Jacquietta Posey from Sydney Lanier High School. We have Ade Scott from Jefferson Davis High School. Not here today, okay. And we have Mikhail Scott from Jefferson Davis High School. Huh? McCirk oh, I'm sorry, did I miss Kirkland? La Kirkland Davis from Sydney Lanier High School. <laughs> I was just saving the best for last, that's all. Sorry about that. And I'm guessing there we got moms and folks over there too, right? Any other parents or families in the? Okay, very good, excellent, excellent. Well, let's give them one more round of applause and also. Also, let's thank Dr. Dr. Alfred C. Wright and the Medical Place for their um, donation of these scholarships. Just outstanding. Thank you guys, thank you so much, congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. congratulations. Now we'd like to congratulate and welcome our employees of the month. Would uh, Ella McCall and Patrice Williams come forward, please? <laughs> Ms. Patrice Williams currently teaches at Garrett Elementary. She's a graduate of Auburn University Montgomery with a bachelor's degree and master's degrees in early childhood and elementary education. She's a teacher mentor, a grade level chairperson, spelling bee coordinator, girls mentor coordinator, and head of the shared leadership committee. She's been recognized as Garrett's teacher of the year and also has received a humanitarian award. According to principal officer, she has a great big heart and is favored by her parents, faculty, and students alike. Congratulations, Mrs. Garrett. Do you have any family here in your Miss Garrett's family? Oh, okay, great, fantastic. Many of you probably know Mrs. McCall. She's been with MPS for 12 years as one of the first faces you see in the Human Resources Department. She greets customers with a smile and helps with paperwork, experience verification, loan forgiveness. I got, we got to talk, I didn't know you did that. Um, and also online certificate renewal for more than 2,000 employees who hold a professional certificate. The Office of Teaching and Le Learning of the State Department of Education commended her for a recent audit, stating that the audit for MPS was perfect because of her efforts. Chief of Staff Kim Pitt said McCall is always calm, caring, and compassionate. She's such a blessing to the HR team. And if I can just say, my mornings are better because when I walk in, I look over and I see that smiling face and I say, good morning, Alice. She said, hey, no, how are we doing? We have a little conversation. So she's just wonderful. So let's please give a great big hand to Ms. Ella McCall. 
and, and I understand some of the HR people are here too, some of the HR family. Okay, and that's her sister. And I've got one more thing before you go. Baptist South, Baptist Healthy, is giving me to do a $25 card card. Just for Lance, and Lance. And Lance. And Lance. So, uh, It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. And, and finally, finally, we've got two more little things I want to say. First of all, we found out today that Lanier PTSA has been awarded a $2,000 grant it's part of the Alabama Bicentennial Celebration, and they're going to use the money for Poet Pantry. So I don't, do we have any Lanier folks here? Is Dr. Williams? No. Well, anyway, did you see over there. The Lanier folks, the Lanier folks uh, just the PTA the um, won two, got $2,000 for their uh, no, pantry, which is fantastic. And then I guess I've Classified. sort of saved the best for last. Last year, we had $49 million in student scholarships, and that was a record. $49 million last year. This year, we've almost doubled that. We have $71 million in student scholarships for the class of 2018. And, and what's, what's interesting, the, the number one school was LAMP with $21 million, and LAMP usually leads our, our list. But number two this year was Lee High School with $14 okay. million dollars in scholarships. Just, just, Thank you, Tom. Well, Mr. President, if I may just say one thing, I'm so proud of our students in MPS. This is just an example of all the hard work of the teachers, the support staff, the parents, the PTSAs for, for being so involved and engaged, and of course, the hard work of the students because what they do is a reflection of what we do. So I'm so proud and so thankful for the parents for being supportive and teachers, administrators, everybody, the community for just standing behind our kids. And I just wanted to say that. And I, I say the same. Thank you for making those kind of remarks. And uh, let, let's again know that there's some wonderful things happening and accomplishments being made in, at MPS. And the children at MPS are certainly being successful uh, in their academics. Uh, um, pathways. Thank you. I'd like to Rece echo also that um, even though I've only been here about She's three months, I'm very pleased and proud of all the accomplishments of uh, our students and our employees. And um, I think this just goes to show that there is so much potential in Montgomery Public Schools, and we're just going to try real hard over the next few years to draw all of that potential out, no matter where it is. We're going to try to draw it out. So thank you all so much. The next item on the agenda would be to receive the inform information, the intervention personnel minutes, uh, August 22nd, 2017, and January 30th, February 21st, 2018. <coughs> okay, get it. Uh, what about the monk of the form and arts? That receives information. Okay, next item on the agenda will be receiving this information the Montgomery Form and Arts Center um, Brutech graduation rental agreement. <coughs> Mr. President. Yes. Um I know I think probably the Principal has already gone from Brutech, but how many, is there anybody here that knows how many seats are in that auditorium for graduation for this agreement, the rental agreement? I hadn't seen that. Mr. Dotson Dr. Is Mr. Dotson here? Oh, well, we're just receiving it as well, information in a way we're not voting on it, so that's fine. Um, I said receive his information. Uh, receive his information. Let's see. Can y'all do it when you get down there? Let me see. We, we're just receiving his information. It doesn't say anything. He is under action. action. We, I know, but we, we're just getting that information. But she's asking a question about the capacity of the place. Melissa? Sir? That was about the, the capacity of this uh, facility, right? Yes. I, I just wanted, because we are voting on it tonight, and, I, yeah. and I'm not trying to 
cause any trouble. It's just that I know that there's always um, a concern that there are not enough seats for family members to attend graduation at this particular event. And I just wanted to know, out of curiosity, how many seats there were. I think there's about 2,500 seats. Okay. Do you know how many are in the graduating class this year? Um, I don't know how many um, are graduating per se, but I mean, if you include the family that's coming, I guess I'm pretty sure that's going to take up a large, you know, some of the capacity of it. Yeah. Okay. I, I just hope. would like to look into that, not for this year, it's too late, mm -hmm. but um, it, it's just a problem every year. Okay, they, here we have some board action items. Next item on the agenda, 6A. Uh, uh, first, let's come up. Thank you. Okay. I recommend that we approve the personnel report certified personnel. It's been more than proper. I'm not here. Yeah. Uh, Mr. President, I move that we uh, approve the uh, personnel report as recommended by the superintendent. Second. Now, it has been pro um, moved and properly second that we approve the personnel certified report. Is there any discussion? I'd just like to make a comment that I made earlier. I want to thank Dr. Ann Roy Moore. This is the first certified report that I've seen that I totally agree with and glad that the, that she's made the movement and the decision that she's made. I'm very proud of it. I'm, I was impressed, to be honest with you. I just thank her. Any other discussion? Those who are in favor, let's see if I show hands. It's unanimous. I recommend that we approve the personnel report support personnel omitting S-20. Mr. President, I move that we accept the superintendent's recommendation on personnel report for support personnel and with the omission. Second. This has been moved and probably second that we accept the superintendent's personnel for recommendation for the personnel support. Is there any discussion? Uh, maybe, uh, hopefully this is the proper time, but one of the um, things, just real quick, I will make it quick. The I was looking at the aides. Is that um, moving forward with the GW sale? Is that, um, are any of these coming off or staying on or how? And this just so I don't know. I probably should have asked earlier. I, I, I knew we had the sale, so I was just trying to see what was going on. Well, we have the sale, not a head, excuse me. And just noted, Kim, there were a few duplicates that I noticed, but that. Well, let me just rephrase that, Mr. Uh, Reverend Welch. In the newspaper, it was reported that it was sold, not by this board, of course. We got to call for the uh, we'll talk after we, we, we have to we, we have to talk about this. Well, we need to uh, continue with the, uh, the agenda as printed, Doctor. I'm certain they'll get with you at the end of this uh, meeting to give you an update on that. We're ready for the okay, question. Okay, now uh, then they those who are in favor, let's see about show of hands, please. It is unanimous. I recommend approval of the board minutes March 27th, April 17th, 25th, 30th, and May 3rd, 2018. Mr. President, I move that we adopt the recommendation of the superintendent. Second. second. It has been moved and probably second that we accept the recommendation of the superintendent on the board minutes as mentioned. Is there any discussion? Those who are in favor, let's see if I shall pass. It is unanimous. I recommend approval of the bid report. Mr. President, I move that we adopt the bid report as recommended by the superintendent. 
Second. It has been moved and probably second that we adopt the bid report as recommended by the superintendent. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, those who are in favor, let's see by a show of hands. It's unanimous. I recommend approval of the Montgomery Performing Arts Center Brutech graduation rental agreement. Mr. President, I move the adoption of the Montgomery Performing Arts Center Brutech graduation rental agreement as proposed by the superintendent. Second. It has been moved and properly second that we accept the superintendent's recommendation for the Performing Arts Center Brutech graduation rental agreement. Is there any discussion? I just again would like to request that we look review it for the following year to see if maybe there's a better venue to seat all of the family members. Those who are in favor of the by show hands. It is unanimous. Adam F, one of the board members, please. Uh, she can't do that, one of the board members. One of the board members, uh, uh, Mr. President, I move that we are, um, I accept the superintendent's mm -hmm. contract as it was discussed in the special session, special special session earlier today. Second. It has been more than properly second that we accept the superintendent's contract as discussed in the earlier session today. Is there any discussion? Yes. I, I, like I said, I have really I enjoy working with Dr. Ann Roy Moore, I think she would do a great job for our system, but I think at the amount that she has said, that, or, or that, that y'all have, have said, it, it goes along with what I've stated, and it's, just, it's just astronomical. We cannot afford it. We have people losing jobs. Some people with, with salaries that are less than 24000 and I think at this point, we cannot afford to do this contract the way it is right now. Is there any other discussion? Any, dis any other discussion? Any other discussion? Those who are in favor, let's see by a show of hands. It's four uh, abstentions. Those who opposed. You know, opposed. We still got okay. Call, call the motion. Okay. What we have here, the motion we have here for, and it is unanimous. The contract goes with the no, super. It's, it's not, not, unanimous. It's not unanimous. Not unanimous. Four, two, one. Okay. It's adopted. Yeah. It is approved. Okay. I got to go. 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 We have some scheduled public comments. Okay. Next item on the agenda will be our scheduled public comments. Did we do the, here, you're right, did we do the personnel? It's just for your information. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Here are your rules and proceeds for the public participation board meetings. Um, public requests must be made in advance to write in the superintendent's office by 4 p.m. on the Tuesday preceding the meeting date. Requests must have specified the nature of the business to be taken up by, with the board and name the person who will address the board to be added to the agenda. Communications must be respectful. Discussing specific student or employee matters, matters will not be allowed. Individuals who have concerns that are inappropriate to be solved in this venue are welcome to seek a problem solving meeting with the superintendent. Immediate feedback by the board may not be provided. However, you may be contacted for follow up by the superintendent or designee. Public comments may not exceed five minutes. The board chair has full authority to terminate the remarks of any person who comments contain personal attacks, exceed the time limit, or, or otherwise inappropriate. 
A speaker may be considered disruptive who continues to speak when their allotted time is ended, when asked to stop speaking by the board chairman or is otherwise inappropriate. If a person fails to comply when asked to terminate comments, he or she will be escorted to their seats of the auditorium and or of MP as property, depending on the level of disruption. First person on the agenda to speak will be Ms. Michelle Krosky, violating my civil rights and kidnapping. Welcome you, Dr. Moore. I worked in the school system for eight years sub. I've seen so many corrupt things. But now that I have my own personal little one, I will fight to the end for her. You best to believe that. Um, April the 6th, I know you got principals that's kin to individuals. And you know who you are. April the 6th, my little girl went with her father April the 4th. I sent my grandmother up there, my mother, which is her grandmother, to pick her up April the 6th. My twin, my mini me, if anybody of y'all seen me in the streets, I have my mini me everywhere I go. But unfortunately, her child, her father makes good, decent money. He can buy his way on everything, buy his way, money talk. And April the 6th, the principal refused to give me my child. She refused to give it to my grandmother, my mother, which is her grandmother, that was on the checkout list. On the checkout list. And I got the checkout list here. I don't understand. What's the purpose of doing a blue card? Somebody tell me. What you do it for? Do you do it for your health? January the 10th, the principal had secretaries to call me to tell me I could not put the individual on the list because of the fact he was on the birth certificate, which is her father. Like I said, I'm not calling no names because I know you can't call names. But y'all will see me every month because my, my rights was violated. When my mother went to pick her up, she should have been released, and I mean immediately. It's no reason she should have been denied to get her own grandchild. I went back up there April 6th with my custody papers. She still didn't release her. They thought it was funny, and I don't think none of it was funny. If it take me open up a lawsuit, I would do it. But somebody gonna do something about these principles I only want to mention the one that's getting his grass cut. He stopped it and was paying my child out of car for money. So, car, so let me get it right. Selling Georgia Washington ain't going to make a bit of difference when you got corrupt individuals that's stealing money from the school. But like I said, you got 11 years to deal with me. She go to the first grade. Yes, the principal ain't happy. Pass this around. The principal's not happy. It's not a bad flight. It just says your child can go to the first grade. I fought that battle for a reason. I had people to say, every child is not dumb. Some parents work with their children, and I work with mine. She made it in kindergarten in January just to be able to get on the bus. The principal was not happy. The secretaries think it's funny. She gets into kindergarten and ride the bus. They don't even want to ride the bus because of the fact she should have gotten in kindergarten because she's only five. Tell me why she couldn't get a kindergarten when she came down here and been tested. But see, we did it under the table. We did it under the table. I have a test. I talked to the left shaker. They said, have a test. When you have a test, if she passed, we're going to put it in kindergarten January. She went to kindergarten January. She's doing six months. She's going straight into the first grade. My child was taken from me for a whole month. The principal had the nerves to tell him to keep her home for three days and do an emergency custody. Do an emergency custody. And when they see my child talk to my child, and I had my own baby for five kids. This is the only baby I had. I done had two foster kids. That's how I wind up so. I done had two. That's why I wind up so. I thought so because I wanted to be around my children. Because I know how it feels to have a parent, to have a child at a young age, and then walk out that child life. But then you take my child all because I want you to be a part of my life. All because I want you to be a part of my life. A man that makes four hundred fifty five thousand dollars I don't know what he did for the person. But the principal had him keep her home three days and say he got an emergency order. I had to physically clown because I told myself I'm going to put me in jail. I'm going to do set it up when she's going to be here. I'm going to go kill, kidnap my child. 
and y'all got to kill me. Because I'm a kidnapper when it came out of my stomach. That's mine. I carry a banana and a principal got away with it. A principal got away with it and she thinks it's funny. And I don't think it's funny. My child was gone for three weeks. Three weeks. I don't even want to talk about why her father did the perm to have. Five years old. She just turned five and he's still. All because of the flyer and because I had a petition signed. That principal had to tell me September 10th. Okay, my man, that's fine. September 10th is when my child was born. I said, don't get mad if you don't fight for yours. But I'm going to fight for mine. I said, you're a principal. You should have had law change. Life is time for a change. And these principals be need to be done like the governor was done. Need to be booted up by these schools because some of them are stealing y'all money. But I know who you are that's kid to them. But I ain't going to call your name. You know who you are that's kid to them. And I'm going to be here every week so y'all do something about that person. Ms. Cross, thank you for your comments. Okay. Uh, the second person that's on the schedule comments, Ms. Mother Rosa. But what I think we need, and that's prayer back in our schools, but come on, get us here, Mother. Good evening, everyone, today. Good evening. I come because I have a lot of petitions out, and a lot of churches are with me. And agree with me 100% that prayer do need to be put back in the schools. When they took prayer out, it caused a lot of problems. Yes. For as long as prayer was in school, we didn't have no problems. I remember when I was going to school, we had to do the Pledge of Allegiance. And now, we have lost our first love. When we put God first, then you will see a big difference. But now... God is out of the schools in so much of chaos. Kids are being killed. Look at the guns are being in the school. That don't need it that. We don't need guns in the school. We need Jesus. That's who we need in the school. <laughs> God first before they start. I know there's a lot of uh, different denomination. They didn't have to pray out loud. But reference God first, if they only just a silent prayer, it would be. I have a lot of petitions everywhere. A lot of churches are standing with me to put prayer back into the school. This is why I brought this to the board, that they would reference the prayer will be put back into school. I thank you for your time. Thank you, Mary I commend you for saying that as yeah. well. Thank you. I agree. Well, I do know prayer changes things. Yes, it does. Uh, changes things. We um, don't we have a, a moment of quiet reflection every morning? I know we used to. When I was well, I know it's not the same, but by law, I mean, you can't force people to pray. But if you're raising your children, listen, I'm a Christian and I'm all for prayer, but I'm just saying... I know when my children were in school, I told them that is your time to start the day in prayer. And um, I think we do offer that moment of quiet reflection at all of our schools. So I would just encourage all of us parents to tell our children that that's what that time is for. Okay, the next person on our agenda is KT Brown, our children. Good evening. Good evening. I had really intended to take it off, but then I got so much literature on my porch as I was coming out until I'm going to have to speak on one of the items. Uh, there's, like someone said, so much potential in the school system with our children, and we are not reaching it. We are not getting our children to the point where they can compete in the world. This one that I received says that in the school system itself, I know we have students who are excelling, but this statement says that you got too many substitute teachers in the classroom. 
And these substitute teachers are not teaching what the teacher would be teaching. That's why they're not passing the test. And one school that I have here in my hand says that we've had three long sum term subs in the building since the beginning of the school year. We were supposed to get a transfer English teacher that never showed up. And that position was long term all year. It is an accountability grade level. We had several different long-term math and science teachers all year long, substitutes. Also, teacher attendance has been at an all-time high this year. And, and this is not the only one that I received, but I brought it because it was worded so well. And I wanted to read to you that which I am receiving from teachers, from parents, from just citizens in general. They're saying that our school system is so messed up. That's why I didn't want to come up here and talk today until you get together. The children are looking at you as you are opposing each other. They don't see any improvement. It's not about you. It is about our youth the people who are going to take over for us as we move aside. Let's get into the schools and do some of the things that are needed for our children and stop fighting for what you think you want. Fight for what the children need and we're not giving it to them. That's why you have so many killings and deaths. You can't blame them. They're not receiving anything. And you need to let it be known in your records, in your rules and regulations that you place out there that you intend to enforce them. You're not enforcing anything. I stayed with the system 30 years, and I didn't see you enforce anything on anybody unless you didn't like it. So come on, people. Work together. Work with the state. Work with whomever you need to work with so that our children can achieve a proper education. Help them. Help us. I thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wayne. Uh, next individual on the schedule for press um, uh, public comments, Mr. William Levi Gilliard. Think big. Has he left? There he is right here. Good evening. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be here again. At the last meeting, I introduced you to a young man from Bellingraf Middle School, Jesse Barnes. Today, I'm going to introduce you to someone who graduated from Bellingraf Middle School. So, uh, my name is Sheldon Curry. Uh, uh, today, I had an opportunity to meet with uh, some of the people who are active in the community, uh, taking time with kids and giving them a, a different concept, some different ideas, some thoughts that are challenging them to become more, to become themselves. Um, in one moment, they wanted us to share with them some ideas and some uh, positive concepts they're making applied during the summer, the summertime. And, you know, they said that they wanted to play, you know, their PlayStations, their games, you know, 2K, do all these things, and they wanted us to share some opportunities. And uh, Mr. Gillier wanted me to share what I share with them, uh, with you today. Um, I encourage them to do something very, very stupid this summer. Um, find the stupidest thing they could think of and do that. Um, something where people would ridicule them about. Um, something that if others saw them doing, they would automatically be ostracized for it. Um, there was one gentleman who said he decided to be a basketball player. And I told him that might require for you to do 100 shots after y'all played your game. And as you're missing every single shot, then people say, oh, bro, you're trash, you're garbage, you're this, you're this. But you keep taking your shots, you keep taking your shots. You might decide that you want to go into culinary arts. And here you are messing up your mother's kitchen, using all the flour, doing all these things. And she's telling you that's completely foolish, baby. Do something else. Go play outside. Go play your game. Get on your phone. Stop messing it up my kitchen. Um, so I was encouraging to do these things that the world would challenge them not to do. Um, because when our children go outside the norm, they're automatically ostracized, especially in certain communities. 
um, growing up in Ridge Crest, there's certain things you just, it wasn't normal for us to see. So normally, I, even myself would attack something that was different, right? So um, as I got older, I realized, oh man, like there's a lot of opportunity in our children being challenged to do things outside of that. And I'm hearing a lot of different con uh, ideas and concepts being presented today. And this is my first time, and maybe my first time coming to one of these meetings. But um, on a positive note, I did want to share that there is a group of young men that are now going into our schools, that are going to and talking to young men, talking to young ladies, and they are sharing positive ideas with them and challenging their thinking on a lot of things. And um, I want you to know from the community, there is help coming from the other side. Of course, the board can't do it all by themselves, the teachers, the principals, we, they, we know they can't do it. And um, I guess on a positive note, there is a fight coming from the other side. So. Uh, working on cars. I was part of the main what did you do? I put a piece of tape on the car. For, Maybe how much a year? Uh, $50,000 a year. And now you're going to do what? Uh, and teach. Be a teacher. Teaching where? Math. At Valley Cross. Teaching mathematics where? At Valley Cross Academy. Say, say one more time where? <laughs> Valley yeah. Cross Academy. Now, what we were talking about is think big. Mm -hmm. Have we met before today? We have not. And when, we, when I got talking about think big. You said think big is what? It's a universal principle. It's a universal principle. So think big is not about Bill Gilliard. It's not about Ben Carson. It's not about Melania Trump who's talking think big now. Think big is universal. Things can change in Montgomery in terms of public education if you can get every parent thinking big, every principal thinking big, every administrator thinking big, because big stands for believe in God, believe in grace, believe in giving, believe in getting, believe in goals, believe in going, believe in growing, and the list goes on. But it is a message that is pervasive, and if young people hear it over and over and over and over again, things are going to change. Think big. Mr. Mr. Gilliard, if I could have a moment just to say this, I want to, I, I learn more and more about you outside of, of MPS. I'll see you out in the streets, and this is the second gentleman for you to bring in here that had you know had a, a life you know a lifestyle that he could work for cars and has chosen to teach at Valiant, and I want you to know I carry your book almost everywhere, where I where I teach right now. It's funny the minister that's over the the program director of ministry said that you were interested in 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 furthering your education as far as a doctorate in ministry, and I can't thank the lady that came on before you and said we need prayer in school. And for you to stand up there and give kudos to everybody but you. People like you are what will move this community. And I thank you for the gentleman that's going to go out there and teach. Mr. Piglet Morrill, Andrea Howard, Outsourcing Custodians. Next. How y'all doing today? Hello. I just want to, uh, I'm a little nervous, but I just want to thank uh, everybody on this board who supported the support staff. And it really means a lot to them over this battle we've been going through. And we just want to let you know we appreciate it and we thank you. And to let you, and this is what we're speaking out about right now is not really aimed at the board or education. We know y'all have been supporting us. This is the state superintendent. It's not them personal. We just want to let them know how we feel about being a support staff. And for him to look at us like maybe he looks at himself and the state workers 
because the state workers have health care and they have retirement. And as a, as a father, and I know he's probably a father, as a father, I know he got kids. And my daughter called me and she said, uh, Dad, I'm not feeling well. I need to go to the doctor. I'm throwing up. And when she, it dawned on me, what we're going through, it dawned on me that, oh, I have insurance. I said, okay, baby, go to the doctor. I have insurance. I have a job where I'm earning maybe not 300 some thousand dollars, but enough to uh, pay the bills. And I said, okay, go to the doctor and let me know how everything turned out. She went to the doctor. She came back and let me know. But it dawned on me. It made me appreciate a working for the boy. It made me aware that, okay, get up every day. You go to a job, and the job supports you. You work. You do a day's work, and you have health care just like anybody else that works for that, that, uh, that you know, building uh, works for the company in a sense that everybody, whether you're a doctor or uh, with a doctor degree as a, like Mr. Mack, the superintendent of the state, whether you're a director, whatever your position level, you're all treated the same because that health care means a lot to families because when a, a family member is sick and you don't have insurance, no matter what position you're in, you're in crisis, you know. So I want him to understand that when you ship out jobs, and that says 600 people, and you shipping them out, you're affecting that whole family as support staff. We're living on, we're not living on three hundred dollars, but a hundred thousand, but not sixty thousand budget. But we can respect the teacher, a principal, and everybody's position that the money they make, they earn. And the benefits they have, they mean something. The retirement. You work twenty-five years. Those benefits mean a lot when you're in our position. And if we're terminated, our jobs, it's like crisis mode. It's not like we got three hundred thousand dollars, we gonna we're gonna be all right to the next job. That means our house you know, crash. We, we, our bills, our health could crash. That's devastating, you know. So you think about six hundred people. We just want him to understand, the state superintendent, that this is not a game for us playing politics. You know, what I'm talking about. saying that we need a reserve fund. This 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 system been running without a reserve fund. Let's just be honest. Just like other other counties in the Alabama. Pike Road don't have a reserve fund. But we've been running without a reserve fund. But guess what? God has blessed us where we have had enough money to pay the bills. So long as we got enough money from the state to pay the bills, that's what we need to do and work on educating kids. Because support staff did nothing to affect the kids' grades. We didn't mess the kids' grades up at all. We, can't, we actually help the kids. We support the teachers. When that teacher comes in that room and that room is clean, and we do this every day. Okay. Not one day, we every day. That, that room is clean. That makes her day. She smiles and says, thank you. It means a lot. When that kid in the cafeteria and is hungry and, and is fed, it means a lot. You know, it gives us joy. So we were looking at we're looking at it like this different. We're a part of this system. So to say that one day, okay, we're gonna cut uh, uh, all the support staff and everything because maybe uh, we don't need them playing politics with us like our jobs don't mean that. When this system ran since Carter days, but ran her. So now all of a sudden we don't have enough money. You know what I'm saying? They said, we need a reserve fund. We got enough money, but we need a reserve. Pay the bill. That's all we got to do. If God gave us enough to pay the bill, because that's the budget we live in. We work every day. God bless us enough to make the money. Guess what we do? We make enough to pay that bill. That's God's blessing. Yeah. Until we can work out another way to get a little bit more. So if God bless us enough to pay that bill, and for us being the, uh, like we've been going, we need to do that and work on the kids. Because the support staff did anything, did nothing to affect this system. This, 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 this whole thing started with somebody reporting, basically, about test scores or something. And then the state came involved. And it's when the state got involved, the first thing they went to is what? Support staff? We ain't doing that for the kids. We ain't doing that to the kids. You know what I'm saying? We supposed to be working on the kids, whether they're reading right, whether um, the teachers have the support they need. We don't need to knock the teachers. Let me uh, appreciate what you're saying. You're absolutely 
I mean, correct. And you're correct. Uh, if he's are, saying you're correct, then how can we afford to pay a superintendent what we're paying her and not pay y'all? Uh, Remember that when y'all vote. I commend you. You better uh, remember it. Morrell, commend you guys for standing up and at least speaking out in regards to those actions that are coming towards you that you know are not in your best interest. There are a lot of things that's happening in this district that's not in the best interest of children, their families, the communities, and certainly the people that tend to work in different positions throughout this district. There are a number of things that's coming down. Certainly, they're unpleasant. They are certainly not in the best interest of the children and the employees, anyone else. But if people will start standing up and speaking out against these kinds of actions, maybe somewhere, sometime, someplace, some of this will stop. Appreciate you coming out. Hello, my name is Andrea Howard. No, I'm so sorry, but we can't do that. You can't do what? Oh, let me see what happened. What happened on you all? I know what they're talking about. You and Vic, you guys had it at the same time. You all supposed to share it your minutes because both of you all listen down here. Three minutes. Give three minutes. Well, three minutes. Give me two minutes. Okay. It's a place you're born, huh? Go ahead, Andrea. Okay. Hello, my name is Andrea Howard. I'm currently the Montgomery County ESP treasurer and also a custodian at JD. Privatizing the custodial staff jobs with the school system would be a big mistake. I understand MPS is searching for financial salvation, but this is not the way. In theory, the idea of contracting public service to private companies to cut makes sense, but as we all know, theories are not proven to be true. According to several analysis, outsourcing is by no means a perfect solution. Some of the problems that can arise from outsourcing are poorly conceived contracts can create cost increase that surpass the cost of the in-house service. If there's shoddy contracts oversight, the school system is defenseless to corruption and profiteering. The privatization of public service can erode accountability and transparency and drive the school system deeper into debt. We have witnessed this firsthand when the intervention team hired Center Sanitation Company to clean 25 schools at the cost of $765,000 during the summer and they did not complete the task. This was money given away by MPS. How much money do MPS have to continue to lose before you all see the ESPs of Montgomery County are quality workers, not quantity. We perform multiple jobs that go beyond our job description. We work longer hours without overtime, and we build relationships with the students and staff at our schools. You will not get this quality of a worker without sources. I'm issuing a challenge to every teacher, principal, and other MPS staff members to stand with the ESPs of Montgomery County to fight this decision. According to a great philosopher by the name of Georgia McCall, if you keep your back bent, they will rise. If you stand up, they will slide off. ESP, if you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. <laughs> Take in a minute, but I do want to thank uh because I didn't say it before, but the superintendent we have now heard great things about you and from just their staff and support of being people and other administration people, and we are happy to have you. And I just want to thank you. Okay, now um this one here, um Miss Tracy Cable and Miss Katrina Marshall, are you here? Now, remember now, you all are on the same one that you're outsourcing special education area. You'll be splitting your time. Uh, excuse me. Y'all will be splitting your time, so make sure that whatever time you're going to use, you save some remaining time for the next speaker because both of you are listed as one. It doesn't. But make sure you save the other person some time so that we won't be... Uh, 
Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Katrina Marshall. Um, I work as a paraprofessional at Children's Center, one of Montgomery's public schools, forgotten schools. It's a children for it's a school for children with multiple disabilities. And we do great works there. I'm represent I'm speaking for the uh, other aides who couldn't be here. Um, I think outsourcing is is awful. It's awful. I started working for MPS as a sub in 2006 when MPS actually hired the subs. Um, after that, we're outsourced to Appleton Learn. So I've been doing this for a very long time. It was not fun to find to think that I was going to have insurance, pay $37.50 a week for my insurance and then go to the doctor and have them laugh at me after six months. It was not funny. We need our benefits. I don't do this for the money, obviously. I have a degree in business. I'm a human resource manager by trade. I don't, I don't do this. I do this because I love the children. In fact, I started doing it so that I could complete my degree. But once I started doing it, I just had to answer the call to serve. So I stayed, and I think the least that we could be rewarded is our benefits. None of us are gonna get rich doing what we're doing. So I just uh, plead with you all to, to con not outsource these jobs. These jobs are very important. But one other, one other point I wanna make, and I'm trying to rush, is when you outsource, you don't know who you're gonna get. Amen. You don't know Amen. what kind of employees you're gonna get to take care of these children. And these children have very special needs. They need consistency. They need to have things that are similar to, I mean, or familiar to them. And they need something that's happening all the time. The same person that works with them all the time. I'm sorry, I'm rushing. But I'm gonna, I, I just want to ask you all, please. And we appreciate also one other thing. We appreciate you. Um, Taking your time to hear me and hear let, yeah, everyone else. A little bit. Let her, I'm rushing. Yeah, let her, let her speak. Sorry. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Tracy Cavill. I am a special needs bus driver. Have been for 18 years. And I love what I do. I enjoy the students. Some of the students on my bus. I keep on my bus for three, four years. I see them through elementary on into middle school. And they look up to me. And when I'm not on that bus, where's Miss Tracy? Miss <laughs> Tracy's not here. I also have a special need child. And she's the world to me. And outsourcing my job and taking those 18 years <coughs> and my benefits from me is hurting my child. And I just, I don't understand why all this talk about outsourcing jobs, selling schools, when the underlying problem is our students. And we need to get together on one accord and find a <coughs> academic level where our K through 12 can achieve. That's the issue, and that's what we have at hand. Instead of focusing on outsourcing jobs, taking people's benefits, and selling schools, and trying to get charter schools in here, that's just spending money that the board does not have. <laughs> it, and it makes no sense. We're all grown, and we need to get together and really, truly, we are all, we, we, we say we're Christian. We need to be Christian and think about our children. And I thank you for your time. Okay, the next individual we have, Mr. Chuck McCall, outsourcing school <coughs> detention aides. Outsourcing school <laughs> detention aides. My call. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, I'm going to be real quick because I'm to the point. 
I've been in Donald Brown for six years in the Hague community. And in those six years, I've seen substitute teachers come in at 10 o'clock there, do I've seen us on days when we put out substitute teachers for a week and nobody wants to show up. Thank you. I work with kids every day. I've been a juvenile probation officer, and just an aftercare. I work with Department of Labor, welfare, and work. So I'm mean, having all these problems. I see them, I deal with them. But I don't think anybody, anybody that I've seen can tell you right now to run into Bellingham to get a job. I'm not talking about school, I'm not talking about kids, I'm talking about the way it is. I'm not trying to forgive me for being point blank. I told you I was going to be quick too. But I don't see anybody, you talking about outsourcing, the number of hats that I have to wear at belly ground. The number of hats that I have to wear. They always say I do it all. I'm the gopher. You know, there are those times I have to deal with the kids because I understand. I know the ones that need the daddy. I know the ones that don't have the daddy. I know the ones that don't come, to, that don't have the, the food at night, that don't have sleeping in the hotel, those problems. And somebody coming in on the street, they don't identify with you. They don't identify with you. The overtime hours I put in, the, th the things I have to do, the nurturing, the little kids, I don't have money to give to these little kids every day when I see them hungry. I just don't. The money that I'm giving for putting this money, the money that I'm losing salary-wise, if I can be somewhere else doing something else with my degrees, I'm at Bella Graph because I love the kids. I live in the hood. I live two blocks from Bellagram. I've had other opportunities to leave, but I don't because of the kids. But I tell you one thing, with the money I'm making, I can't do it without benefits. I can't do it without benefits. And I don't mind saying that part of the reason why I stayed is because of benefits, because it's not the money. It's just not the money. You know, when I come in on a day when I'm walking through, and at 10 o'clock in the morning, I'm down the hall, I've got a kid doing something, got to look up, this teacher is walking out. <laughs> now, because, you know, my draw was, well, I play football out of I play football. Kids like to hear that. Okay? In the evening time, I referee. I do football, basketball, and baseball. The kids love that. But understand this. It's getting to the point now where the jobs that I do outside of Bellin' Ground, dealing with some of these kids, it's costing me uh, my opportunities. I can't afford to lose my livelihood. And I've given up my livelihood for MPS and Bellin' Ground. So this is kind of upsetting me. You know, I don't think that you're going to be able to find somebody that's to come in day in and day out who doesn't have any connection with the parents. I, I hope you find this on it. I know parents, kids, you know, um, that I deal with day to day. Grandfathers, uncles. But what I'm saying to you now, though, is, is that the connection between the parents, just bringing somebody in, like a substitute teacher, I'm here for the day, I'm making my check, I'm going. But I have to come in every day. I show up every day. So basically, without going any further on any questions, but boy, I can tell you there's a lot going on. But my experience, everything that I've been, I can tell you. But at this point in time, I'm just saying outsourcing, without that connection, without that tie that binds, without something coming from the inside with somebody that means something to you, I don't care about my next door neighbor. I care about what's inside my house. I care about Bellagram. And Bellagram is a part of the business. I, I have a comment, please, to say. Number one, you know, I, I, I have to say this. I appreciate you being up there more than anything. I think anybody out there that's supporting you knows you are telling 110% the truth. But what I have a problem with is when you said that you wear multiple hats, okay? I know for, I know for sure you're wearing the assistant principal's hat over there because he hasn't been there all year. So you're probably, and, and yet, because he's sick. 
and we have a human resource that tells me we couldn't do anything because AEA protects him. We have the national AEA person here right now, and I want her to know why are we supporting an assistant principal that didn't show one day to your school so you had to wear that hat, and yet because he's sick, He's sick, but yet he's running today in election, and most of y'all will vote for him. Because I'm telling it like it is? Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. But it's okay that he missed the whole year? Because he's sick, but he's running for something. Oh, yeah. Call him out. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Next in the, next individual. All right, we're 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 still meeting here. We want to complete where we are. We have some other individuals who would like the same opportunity to be heard. The next person on the agenda will be Tommy Gordon. Oh, huh? know me. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello. Um, again, my name is Tainomi Gordon, and I'm currently holding the guidance aid position at Carver High School. And I have an invested interest in Carver and Montgomery Public School System. First of all, I was I had a son to graduate from Carver three years ago. I have a middle school middle son who is attending Carver, going to the twelfth grade, and I have a seventh grader that is excited and will be attending Carver in two years. That is called invested interest. I was Carver's PTSA president for two years before I before I became or before I started working for Montgomery Public School System. That is called invested interest. I've had students to improve on their grades, their work ethics, because I take the time out to check on their grades, and that is called invested interest. My son plays football, and having a football team calls me mom because I care for them on the field and in the classroom. That is called invested interest. The revolving door, which will be your outsourcing staff, that you will have around our children don't have an invested interest in our school system nor our children. The stability that we give to our children, our families, are not outsourceable. You will outsource and you would and you would do this without damaging or hurting our children or this school system. Our jobs are valued in this community and in our school system and in our families' lives. I have an invested interest in my government public school system because I have not only a biological child there, but I have multiple children there that calls me mom, that I care about. He talks about taking money out of his pocket to feed them. I have kids that come in there on a daily basis like, Mom, Ms. Gordon, what do you have to eat? I'm so hungry. I do that out of the kindness of my heart. You're not gonna have people that you are outsourcing, come in and invest that kind of time or care or love to the kids that we support every day at Carver. So I'm here to tell you that outsourcing is not good because you're taking what is familiar from our kids, which is us. We've been there for them, not only from biological, uh, from birth, but some of us has been with our kids over five years, from middle school to now high school, to try to see them get to the next level in their lives. And outsourcing it and having different people there on a daily basis because it's gonna be a revolving door because they're not gonna stay there. They're not gonna invest, they're not gonna care like we do as parents for Montgomery Public School System. <laughs> You know, I, I'm, I'm sitting here, and you know, certainly your, your voices need to be heard, but uh, this, certainly this board, this board, fought against outsourcing. These, these recommendations doesn't come from this board. It comes from the State Department. This is not the board that even proposed anything like outsourcing of any job. Matter of fact, we fought against it. State Superintendent one who 
actual was the one who presented this. It hadn't come into any fertility yet, but it's something that he placed out there. But we will listen. But the state superintendent needs to hear all what you guys are saying. That's why we're doing it. We're hoping that he, not Richardson, but the, the one that's here now, we're hoping that he will see this. We, know we better hope that it gets out on the WSLA or one of them, but we and just hope so. Okay. 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 We'll keep going. Thank you. Clarissa and Nathan at Wing. You all. I, 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 who? I know. Clarissa, Nathan, and at Wing Rhea. You all are sharing your time? Oh, yes, you have it. Okay, go ahead. Okay, good evening, everyone. Okay. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of our Southern Children's Church Temple employees. Um, I'm a cafeteria manager at Lee High School, and not to just echo what everyone else has been saying, but I, I can't help but echo it's the same fears that we all have as support staff. So um, two primary things that would happen if outsourcing did happen, I'm glad it did, I'm glad that someone found some money elsewhere so that we can keep our jobs, but in case the issue come back up again in the 2019 and 2020 school year, I hope these things still resonate in your mind of what would happen. So two primary things. Of course, number one, the loss of benefits and or benefit quality. So like everyone else before me have said, it's not the money that keeps us here, it's the benefits. You know, um, that's why you have longevity, that's why you have a low turnover rate, that's why you have people that and become family with one another and stay here because of benefit. And I'm fairly new in the system of them, going on my second year. And I love it. It's been a blessing to me. I come out of fast food. So from fast food until this, it's like heaven to me, even in the messes it's in. It's still like heaven to me. And I don't want to lose my job. I want to be outsourced <laughs> because I'm just not getting comfortable and, and getting used to the privileges. And all of a sudden, boom, I'm boomed to, oh, you might be on the verge of losing your job. But if not me, my employees, I still, I'm a manager, so I still got to feel for them, you know. So um, that's the primary thing. Number two, the turnover rate will increase, of course. The food quality will decrease. Now listen, now I know y'all heard some stories about our food, but at, at Lee High School, it has improved. Over the board, the new, the new faces that we have in child nutrition, our food quality has improved greatly. They've invested all kind of training and development to our people. And I know I've seen the complaints go down. Now, you're going to have some kicking children who are going to take pictures and tell their mom, this is all we got for lunch, but that's all they put on their tray. But that's a whole other issue. But <laughs> the, the, the quality of food is going to decrease if you have someone else coming in that don't know the kids at all. Because listen, now, we, we work there day in, day out. We see these children come from, like, I'm high school, ninth grade up to the time they graduate. We pour them a bond with them. Like she said, someone said, they all call us mom. Hey, mom, hug us, you know, and we, we know what they like. We, that makes us take the extra step to prepare the food, put all the condiments out, take pride in our work. But if we have somebody coming in with a tip, like a tip serve, they're not going to take pride in it, period. I'm telling you right now, that's the problem with fast food. If you complain about McDonald's so much, our, our child and children are going to turn to McDonald's. Part of the food going to go down completely. Because no one's going to care like they normally care, like like they would if they been there 10, 15 years. Um, some statements I took from my people that's that's there. How it would affect them if they if they did go to outsourcing? I have an employee that's been there 19 years, 19 years in the cafeteria. She's saying she's she's about ready to retire. If we go to outsourcing, her retirement gone, her benefits gone. You know what I'm saying? This prime her life when she's getting ready to go home. Everything is the rug and snatch from under her. So, you know, just just, just something to think about. Um, those two things, those primary two things, will have a very negative impact on the child nutrition program and the children who depends on our meals to thrive. So, if y'all, you know, y'all found the money one way, um, out. Well, I guess they outsourcing us. I guess they found something. But keep digging. Please come up with some, another solution. I know that's the go-to method. You know, because it's been proven in other counties, that's the go-to method, but it's going to have, it's going to be a big snowball effect on our economy. You know, imagine a whole city, because look at just this little room full of employees right here. So it's like, I don't know how many employees were, um, for the Montgomery Public Schools, so imagine no one had benefits 
how would that affect our country? How would that affect the hospitals with all the bills with doctors having to see poor people with no it benefits? How would that affect the unemployment rate? How would that affect the food stamp program? You get what I'm saying? It just don't, it's not, you, you're trying to say that one thing, but it's going to affect two and the other different things. So please come up with another way. In the future, you can't know the solution this one year. Please, something long term to benefit us. The next person we have on will be Miss Bridget Johnson, Miss Mr. Ellis, and Mr. Miss Pamela West Conversion Charter School. Good evening. Congratulations, Dr. Moore, on your appointment. I stand in strong opposition of charter schools. A few weeks ago, well, a few a couple of months ago maybe a few weeks ago. We had a meeting at Sydney Lanier High School and myself along with several other educators, we challenged those who wanted to bring in this new conversion charter to our district about what they would do differently. We asked them about the curriculum and they did not have a solid answer. We asked them how the school day would run and they indicated, well, you know, we would go ahead and do longer school days. This is something the NPS can do. We asked them about professional development. They said that they would have 12 professional, professional development days throughout the year, and the students will receive a half day. Again, this is something the NPS can do. I stand before you with several concerns, not only as the president of the Montgomery County Education Association, but also as a parent. Kirk, if you were staying, you saw him a few minutes ago, he received a scholarship for Medical Place, but he also stands as a student leader at his school. Thank you, sir. But with him being my son and attending different meetings, he has, initially he wanted to be a doctor, but because of our passion, because of the love of students, and because of him attending different meetings, he has now changed his major, and he now wants to be a public educator. Now, what does that have to do with public charter schools? Kirk also travels with me as we travel advocating public education through the National Education, the education Association. Um, and while he's in those meetings, we learn many things about charter schools and how they're run in other states and how they are ineffective. So I am asking that we please stand in opposition, number one, because we want to make sure that our students receive an adequate education, one that we can equate to our state testing. And also, I'm asking that our teachers will remain in their, pla in their places of employment with job security. Additionally, I am asking that the Montgomery Public Schools support charter schools not being in, in place in our communities because I really believe our schools are fixable. We have the solutions. We need to get together and work on those solutions. Thank you. Thank you. That's the last comment there, but uh, I want to let all of you know that this board worked diligently last, um, I guess we'd say October, November, where we were charged to come up with a budget that would be balance for this district. We did. We presented a budget to Dr. Richardson that only impacted 114 employees. There was no talk of outsourcing of jobs, no closing of schools, no selling of buildings. And we presented to Dr. Ed Richardson a balanced budget only impacting 114 employees. Our budget that we presented was rejected. None of this that we are listening to today and these things that are coming upon the children would have come if that budget had been accepted. That we did present to them, which was a balanced budget, met the needs that he required of us, but yet that budget was rejected. There was no mentioning of outsourcing, closing buildings, or selling property. Now, that is the last citizen comment. There are no more, so at this time, this is Meeting is a joy. Thank you for coming.